Hey everyone, I just came back from Frankenstein and they had the Jon Favreau Paz Vizsla convention exclusive. I do have this on pre-order from Hasbro, but it wasn't too much more than it's gonna cost from Hasbro after tax and shipping, so I decided to just pick this up a couple weeks early and give you guys a little preview of this figure. This is similar to the Dave Filoni one that we got from, I think, PulseCon last year. Plastic free packaging here. He does have some plastic around the wrists and the guns, which they have actually done without on the Favreau figure, which we will look at in a little bit. These are similar to the convention exclusives that we've had from years past, such as Cad Bane and the Armorer. If you remember, the Cad Bane came with a Toto 360, which is that little droid that he comes with. That is exclusive to this figure. This does end up going for like $100 now on the aftermarket, last I checked. The Armorer comes with some extra accessories, like a Mando helmet and some heated up looking instruments. I did take a couple of those out. She also has some fur on her shoulders instead of just sculpted plastic. I actually prefer the sculpted plastic. Here is the figure opened up. He is in a single box here versus the Filoni figure, which was in little compartments. And you can see that instead of plastic around the figure and the accessories, we have these kind of like paper strings almost. I don't know how else to describe them. I'll get into that a little bit later. I was opening this and realized that it had some of the mural art on the back with a little blurb about Jon Favreau and how he voices the character of Paz Vizsla on The Clone Wars. I didn't know that uh, the the exclusives had this on there, so I checked the Dave Filoni figure, and sure enough, he has a little, uh, you know, mural artwork on the back there as well, and so that's pretty cool to see. I didn't know that these actually had any of that on there, so nice little touch there. The tricky part on these is trying to get the figures out without damaging the package because I'm someone that likes to keep my figures back in the package if I'm not actually having them actively displayed on the shelf. But the way that these are designed, that is extremely difficult and I haven't actually found a way from the other convention exclusives to open them while still being able to display them back in the package when I'm done. Let's see if we can figure that out today. The little UPC code you see there is uh, the actual security tag that Toy Arena uses to make sure people don't steal these out of their booth at Frankenson, which if you don't know is a collectibles expo that is in LA and it's three times a week and this is where I get all of my stuff early. A lot of the vendors get stuff shipped directly from Hong Kong or they get it flown over so it arrives a lot faster than the ones that come shipped from Hasbro. These little tabs here are the trickiest part because they will rip if you're not careful but I found that if I use a box cutter and make just a little slit here just to allow a little bit of leeway, they pop right out without ripping any other parts of the box so hopefully these will go back in just as easily as they come out and this allows me to actually remove the insert without damaging the box itself these plastic strings are gonna be a pain in the butt though but at least I can retie them when I'm done but there is the figure out of the package. We obviously have seen this body before on the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian from a few years ago and again on the carbonized body from a few months ago Look at this mess back here. I do actually prefer this to the plastic ones that come on the Dave Filoni figure because those you kind of have to rip them. You can't really put them back. These you could at least retie if you need to. But let me go ahead and try to untie all of these as carefully as possible. This video is not sped up. This is actually how fast I move when I'm opening toys. These are all loose enough now that I can get the figure out of the box here. I am gonna have to pull the one that's around his waist just completely out and then maybe I can feed it back through after. Honestly, the more I like open this, the more I'm the less convinced I am that I'm going to be putting this back in the package because this is kind of, you know, this isn't really <laughs> reasonable. But okay, let's just take a look at the figure itself now. No surprises here if you have owned any of the other versions of this sculpt. What's nice about this is that you can throw the helmet on and it just becomes regular heavy infantry Mandalorian like we saw in Book of Boba Fett as well as the Mandalorian. But the real selling point here is of course the Jon Favreau head, which we have gotten actually in 6 inch form before in the Happy Hogan figure in the Marvel Legends line, but we'll look at that in a minute. The helmet here is just your typical Black Series helmet. It is pretty nice, it's pretty thick, it's not going to warp too much. And it does look really nice on his head. I think that the size actually looks much better than the first Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, where the head looks a little bit undersized, but we will also compare that in just a minute. Looking at the Marvel Legends Happy Hogan figure, I think the likeness on the left is a little bit better than the one on the right. He does have his goatee, which he has in real life, because the appearance on the left is based on his appearance in the Marvel movies. The hair looks a little bit better on the one on the left because it doesn't have to fit a helmet, but I feel like the helmet would still have fit pretty decently without his hair being so cropped. It just looks a little bit off to me, and even on the box art we see him with much longer hair like he has in real life. But now let's compare this to the Mandalorian Season 1 release of the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian before we knew who this guy was or what his name was. You can see that the sculpt is identical, of course, but the colors are actually quite different. So the one on the right, a little bit more muted, a little bit more matte in the paint, and the yellows are a little bit more vibrant on the knee pads and the boots. The ones on the left are kind of more brown. 
but then overall the yellows on the jetpack are a little darker on the one on the right and the skirt is a little lighter it's it's kind of all over the place here but i actually do prefer the newer colors on the right like if i were to just have one heavy mandalorian on the shelf i would actually want the john favreau figure i think the helmet looks a little bit more like a helmet on top of a human head in terms of scale and the colors just look a little bit more realistic and a little bit less toyish i'm really curious to hear from you guys in the comments who pre-ordered this, if you will be displaying him in box, if you'll be displaying him without the helmet next to Dave Filoni and the George Lucas Stormtrooper figure, or if you're just going to use this as a heavy Mandalorian on your shelf instead of an actual Jon Favreau figure. Just a reminder that channel memberships are available if you would like to see my videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. They are $1.99 per month and you get special name badges and emojis to use in the chats, live streams, and in comments. Like this video if you haven't already, please subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you all next time.